Spoilers for the whole series. This isn't an uncommon opinion. In fact, most fans of the 2018 She-Ra reboot, She-Ra and the Princesses of Power, would agree that for a show about the power of friendship, it highlights the uglier parts of just that, friendship. This feels comical to say because on the surface, S-Pop seems like an excessively sugary show. However, the idea of friendship in S-Pop is not a giant collective opinion from the good guys, nor is it funneled primarily through the series protagonist, Adora. Instead, each character has a unique relationship with the idea of friendship, and I want to go through with the more notable ones, as well as point out who has the objective hottest take. Spoiler, it's Bo. Let's start from the top, though. If we think of shounen anime, most fans are used to protagonists fulfilling the majority of the friendship role in a show. Characters like Naruto, Gon, and Natsu are the epitome of fighting for your friends and forgiving your enemies. While Adora possesses some of these qualities, she's by no means as relentlessly forgiving as a shonen protagonist. And before you argue, please hear me out. While Glimmer is quick to bring up Shadow Weaver's potential assets to the Rebellion, Adora is clear that she distrusts the Sorceress, which is, you know, valid considering the years of abuse that Adora faced. Adora never has a moment in which she forgives Shadow Weaver and wants to start fresh. She's forgiving, but she absolutely draws lines. Understood. Stop! I will never forgive you! You ruin people! I did what I had to do. Keep telling yourself that. Of course, Adora eventually forgives Katra. When Shira gives Katra that look after the portal in the season 3 finale, that was the moment fans knew Adora was done chasing Katra's redemption. However, despite Adora no longer trying to get Katra to do the right thing, she doesn't stop believing that Katra is capable of this change. I think it's super important that Katra's redemption starts with her own decision. Of course, she has Glimmer to give her the nudge, but with how much their characters parallel each other, especially in the fourth and fifth seasons, it's more like they're helping each other grow in the friendship department. Katra helps Glimmer physically escape, and Glimmer helps Katra emotionally, begging her to do one good thing with her life. A good deed that leads to Katra's efforts towards atonement. I think it's great that Adora has a role in helping Katra grow, but I think it's even better that she's not the one to start her on this path, because that would undermine the message that sometimes you need to take the first step yourself. Adora places great value in her friends, consistently reminding the audience that she would give her life for them. However, she places her morals over personal relationships and is willing to call out her friends and go behind their backs if she feels it would benefit the greater good. And Glimmer and Katra, the lovely parallels they are, both feel hurt by this trait of Adora's, taking it personally. And left me. left us all behind. Yeah, of course she's gone! That's what she does, isn't it? Katra is the opposite of Adora in this sense. Katra at the series start, and I cannot stress enough that it's mostly just the start, places her personal relationships above any greater good. What's cool about S Pop is that it doesn't change this trait of hers when she has her redemption arc. In Season 5, Katra isn't nearly as focused on saving the world as the others are, and it would be poor writing to make it that way. Instead, Katra bases her Season 5 journey on repairing her relationships, particularly her relationship with Adora. The series isn't villainizing this mindset because Scorpia, the sweetest character on the show, is the exact same way. She doesn't defect from the Horde because of their treachery and violence, but because she recognizes how bad of a friend Katra has been towards her and Entrapta. I only came here to help Entrapta. I left the Horde but I'm not gonna betray them. Katra operates this way at the series start, only caring that she and Adora stick together. Because it doesn't matter what they do. The two of us look out for each other. But as the series progresses, Katra shoves aside any potential relationships and looks instead for destruction. Ironically, her inability to put any effort into her relationships is the same reason most of her friends leave, which is the reason she has mad abandonment issues, which is the reason she lashes out at her friends, and it's a tragic cycle. As each person leaves, Katra becomes more and more unhinged until she feels, in my opinion, near irredeemable. Double Trouble is the character that propels this the most, but I'll get to them later. Katra in Season 5 returns to putting her personal relationships first. What did you expect? After all, us Aetherians are so very emotional. She saves Glimmer and consequently saves Adora. Like most fans, I wish more time was spent on Katra apologizing to Scorpia and even Mermista, but at least we get to see her with Entrapta again. Thank you. And I'm sorry. Entrapta also has a unique perspective on friendship. Entrapta, unlike Scorpia and Katra, never fosters ill will towards the Rebellion. While Entrapta works with the Horde, it's clear that she doesn't actively believe in their goals. I never said weapon, I said there's a piece of First One's tech buried deep under the ice. She thinks she's expanding technology, a step for all humankind, which to her is doing the right thing. Does this excuse her actions? No. 
but it's an interesting choice for character writing. Entrapta doesn't hate the Princess Alliance like the rest of the Horde does, even talking to Bo and Glimmer like old friends while on opposite sides of the war. However, it is implied that Entrapta feels hurt that the princesses left her behind in Season 1. In Season 5, Entrapta helps the heroes and they would have been literal toast without her help in space. Entrapta also wants to make up for the bad blood between her and the other princesses, namely Mermista, because, again, her entire kingdom was destroyed under Catra's lead with Entrapta's tech. Entrapta proves that she's no longer trying to mess with Prime's tech for fun, but because she wants to save Glimmer. Glimmer needs us! I know Kyle, Lonnie, and Rogelio aren't necessarily relevant to the plot, but Espop made Season 4 Episode 5 Protocol, so how can I not talk about them? Unlike in the 80s cartoon, the Horde isn't depicted as a bunch of sexy villains trying to kill civilians for kicks. I mean, I guess Hordak is kind of, but he's also looking for approval from Horde Prime, I don't really know. But these kids are raised to believe they're helping Etheria, trained to be child soldiers. Many are not very effective killers at all, and are, in fact, more child than soldier. However, propaganda can be broken free from, and just like Adora leaves, Kyle, Lonnie, and Rogelio eventually leave as well. They follow Scorpia and Catra in terms of placing personal relationships over a larger moral compass, because when they see Queen Glimmer in the Fright Zone, they just tell her to take care of Scorpia. Kyle is the punching bag of the show, which is something I've brought up my confusion toward in the past. If the show stresses friendship above all else, why is he the butt of the joke for no reason? In Season 4, Episode 5, the series shows that while Kyle gets shit on, his friends do care about him and are willing to risk their safety to help him. This episode is great because it not only shows that the Horde soldiers have their doubts in the Horde, but that no matter how hard they try to keep these kids cold, they inevitably forge bonds. Clearly, they're doing a shit job making heartless soldiers if Scorpia exists. Scorpia does place value in friendship. You all seem really good at friendship. You're here to learn how to be a good friend? So when she defects from the Horde for the sole purpose of saving Entrapta, it makes sense that given her bright personality, she would make quick friends with the princesses. Despite how much of a hand Scorpia had in hurting the Rebellion, the princesses are much quicker to forgive her than, say, Entrapta, who was on their side and then switched up. Scorpia is also interesting seeing as she is the person to believe that there is good in Catra for the longest time. Catra rarely shows any kindness towards Scorpia, and when she does, like in the Crimson Waste, it's literally the bare minimum and it's sad seeing Scorpia thrilled about it. Fans spend the first four seasons hoping Scorpia stands up for herself, but realistically, I don't think Scorpia would have ever dunked on Catra had Entrapta not been involved. I.e., Catra sending Entrapta to Beast Island was the turning point in Scorpia's relationship with Catra and the Horde. You see the stages Scorpia goes through in reaction to the portal aftermath. At first, she thinks Catra doesn't mean to send Entrapta to Beast Island. And then she thinks Catra will take what she said back, and then she thinks Catra was under a lot of pressure excusing her behavior. Scorpia is kind of like every cat girl war criminal defender in the world. She's misunderstood! You of all people should know that! She tries defending Catra for the longest time because she's the only one who still believes in her, but eventually even Scorpia gives up and leaves with what is arguably my favorite line in the whole series. You're a bad friend. God, look at the look on this bitch's face. Glimmer, as I said, parallels Catra in many ways. Glimmer is possessive of her friends and lashes out at them when she disagrees with them, but by God, after watching 80s Shira, am I glad they gave Glimmer such an in-depth personality. Glimmer explains that for most of her life, it was just her and Beau, and she didn't have many friends. This explains why Glimmer is quick to panic when anyone new enters the scene. Of course, I have to talk about Princess Prom, because this is not only a great example of Glimmer's idea of friendship, but Beau's as well. Beau thinks the more the merrier, while Glimmer worries that she'll be replaced, in this case by Perfuma, who goes as Beau's date to Princess Prom. Glimmer, I'm allowed to hang out with other people. But, but, but don't you see? That's how it starts! What I love about S-Pop is that it doesn't center to that everyone was correct in some way and we need to meet at a compromise mindset, which is fine sometimes, but it's often a crutch in cartoons marketed towards a younger audience. Instead, when it comes to these two, Bo is usually in the right. There isn't a moment where they compromise, but instead, Bo explains why Glimmer is wrong, reassures her that she shouldn't be worried and that of course they're friends, and gives her time and space to think it over. God, I love Glimmer and Bo. They are the perfect example of a well-written relationship that still has well-defined flaws, that are worked through throughout the series, while the characters still consistently have each other's backs. Bo exhibits these same ideas in Season 4, 
the season where all hope seems lost, because Adora and Glimmer are at each other's throats, Team Adora, and while Glimmer acts objectively unsexy in season four, Maybe your best isn't good enough. If it was, my mother would still be here. It does make sense given her mother just passed away and she's under a lot of pressure to end the war. No, I don't agree with Glimmer, at all, and her butting up with Shadow Weaver explains why Adora is less than thrilled with my favorite angry sparkle princess. But even when they fight, there are moments when you can see that these two girls just want to do what's best for each other in the end. Bo at first stays in the middle as a mediator, wanting to salvage what friendship they have as the war continues. And I get that it's hard being friends sometimes. You gotta work at it. So why am I always the only one who's willing to work at it? Bo knows that keeping their friendship alive will take work, but he won't bend backwards to make sure everyone feels comfortable. Eventually, he puts his foot down and tells Glimmer that she's wrong. Because you're wrong! This is really what cements Bo as the best at friendship, in my opinion. Bo and Adora disagree strongly with Glimmer in season 4, and it fractures their relationship, but when Horde Prime captures her, they still do everything in their power to bring her back. Adora, who leans into her anger a lot more than Bo in season 4, doesn't harbor any negative lasting emotions towards Glimmer after her rescue. Bo, who had to act as the glue in season 4, finally lets his frustration surface. Then, when Glimmer apologizes to Bo, it's what I would argue was one of the best apologies in cartoon history. You get to be mad for as long as you need to be, but I'm not going anywhere. And when you're ready, I'll be here. Glimmer doesn't guilt Bo into forgiving her immediately, and Bo doesn't force himself to move on. Instead, it's a promise that despite there still being a lot to work through, they'll have each other's backs and Glimmer won't stop working at making things right. God, I am obsessed with them. This idea of tough love being a pillar of friendship really comes alive with Double Trouble's character. I know people toss around chaotic neutral a lot, but I think it's really applied in Double Trouble's case. They only care about money and being on the winning side, switching up their allegiance from the Horde to the Rebellion the moment they learn about the ancient superweapon. However, I fully believe that the scene in which Double Trouble emotionally demolishes Catra is for her own good. After all, Double Trouble is one of the first people Catra thinks of as a friend in a very long time. They turn into all of the people Catra once respected and cared for, and pretty much says, damn bitch, maybe you're the problem. This is what finally pushes Catra to acknowledge her own mistakes and makes her reevaluate her priorities. Yes, Double Trouble does it partially for the drama, but I fully believe they want Catra to improve as a person. It's for your own good, darling. We both know this was never what you really wanted. Like most fans of the show, my biggest gripe is with Hordak's final moments. He refers to friendship as being what breaks him from Prime's control, but Hordak gets off very easily considering how much destruction he causes. Maybe it's because he's a full-blown adult, or maybe it's because he doesn't work towards any atonement, but I feel like he's let off too easily. Glad you're here. So are we all just like, okay with this? He still, despite being a big bad villain prior to season 5, demonstrates that Ethereans forge bonds that Prime cannot comprehend. I also want to touch on the other prominent princesses. I already talked about Entrapta, but there's Perfuma, Mermista, Frosta, and even Natas and Spinarella to a degree. These princesses characterize loyalty and friendship above all else, and while they aren't as prominent to the plot as the other main characters, they're vital in the series' depiction of friendship variety. For example, Season 5 highlights Perfuma's inability to unlock her true potential out of fear of hurting her friends. Well, some might say that's actually a positive quality. It's not. Perfuma is more of a pacifist than others, wanting to find victory through love rather than violence. I think it's always cool to have characters with different methods of achieving peace. This is the exact reason I love Aang as the protagonist in Avatar The Last Airbender. After Natasa tears her a new one, I thought Perfuma would have to learn to sacrifice her ideals to save the day. Instead, Perfuma doubles down. Friendship isn't a weakness. It's my greatest strength, and it's Scorpia's too! I always loved Perfuma, but season 5 really brings out the best in her character. Mermista is less forgiving and peace-minded than Perfuma, even backing Glimmer's idea to use the heart of Etheria in season 4 for hot sec. Her kingdom faces the brunt of the Horde's advances, so it makes sense that she's more desperate than the others. Mermista, however, is one of the most loyal characters on the show, caring so deeply about her friends, despite her perpetually bored character. Ugh, I don't know, I guess. That's why when Mermista tells Entrapta she has her back, you know she really means it. Mermista is a lot more direct than the other princesses in this sense. Frosta is just a kid, but she wants to help her friends. I know she's used for a while as a wake-up call to Glimmer, but the moment that really sticks out to me is when Frosta catches Bo and Adora sneaking off to Beast Island behind Glimmer's back. 
I joined to save people, and the Horde, even after everything they did, they're people. Remember when I talked about characters who focus on morals versus characters who focus on personal relationships? I always pegged Frosta as the latter, but this scene makes me rethink. Frosta is a hardcore Glimmer stan, so by aiding Adora and Bo's escape, she's proving that she is more objective than most people would expect a child of her age to be. I also love this episode because it shows Frosta and Scorpia becoming friends immediately, and I just think that's cute. Spinnerella and Natasa don't really send many messages in the friendship department, but they were a part of the Princess Alliance before anyone else, so they're ride or die, I guess. Pretty much all of these characters relate to each other in different ways and view friendship from different angles. I think it's clearest after watching Edi Shira, which is great in its own right, but doesn't add much depth beyond the dichotomy of good versus evil. Espop is more complex and works hard to represent each character's personality in their relationships with one another.